Welcome back to the Always Reading Book Club. It is your girl Kiki Reader and we're doing a different type of erotic fiction today and I'm so shocked, little disappointed in myself that I didn't realize that this genre existed. So we're going to do a space futuristic erotic fiction book and I'm so excited to like dive into this series with you. So the name of the series is called the Condemned Series. It's by Allison Ames and book one is called Trapped. Okay, before I start, I do again have to say just how much the mere fact that this combines space, the future, like one of my favorite shows is called The Orville and I like the Star Treks and stuff like that. The new ones i'm not really that big on the old ones don't be mad at me but i love that type of stuff so when i came across this i was just so happy because i was like oh my gosh it combines space and erotic fiction <laughs> so i just love that okay so we start off it is the year 9015 and earth is in a really bad place um the council people they're like the ruling class and then you have basically everyone else right so we meet a cadet um annabelle west she is a junior scientist and she has two siblings a brother and a sister they're younger and she basically got into this program which allows her to she can only work up so far like she really can't go beyond an assistant scientist really because everything above that is like council level so you can't like go up to that point but it allows her to take care of her siblings you know and so she is currently on a mission in space to a planet called i hope i'm saying it right Dragoth 25. This is a prisoner planet. So this is where Earth sends all their worst prisoners. So the prisoners, of course, when they go, it's a one way ticket, right? Because this is their this is their sentence. That's it. And apparently it's not the best climate there. It's a really harsh climate. So some intel has come in saying that apparently there's possible resources on this planet. And of course, this could in turn be life changing for the people back on Earth. So she, of course, agrees to go on this mission. So one of the council members, I think his name, he's a head scientist too. His name's Winthrop. He has a thing for Bella. Now, her name's Annabelle, but we're going to call her Bella. That's what they call it throughout the book. So she notices that he has a thing for her, but she's not into him. So she doesn't, uh, what's the word? She doesn't play with him like that. You know, she doesn't give into it to make him think she kind of likes him. Like she doesn't, she doesn't move that way with him. Also, it's actually not even supposed to be allowed mixing like that. And if it goes south she's the only one that's going to suffer because he's a council member so nothing's going to happen to him so there's a quite a few people on there they're getting ready to land and then something goes terribly wrong so the captain comes over the speaker saying you know we ran into some type of electrical um problem and then the speaker cuts out and they crash Bella wakes up, she sees fire, she helps a couple people get out, but really she only saves like I think maybe three people total off the science team. Um, the rest, the other 10 were military people that were that were there to protect the scientists. 10 of those men and their lead guy, his name last his name's Pogue, that's his last name. They all survived. She even helped, I think, Pogue get out. And he didn't want to go back and help anybody else. It was so sad. So pitiful. And so she's like, thankful they survived, but they're on a prison planet. So she's just kind of like, oh, my gosh, we survived. But for how long? 
We then meet prisoner 673. So this is one of those goes back and forth between the different characters. And you know I love it. So he hears the commotion going on outside. Um, so he heard the crash and he hears a woman's voice. He hears a man saying, you know, we're leaving. Um, he's leaving with his men and they're taking their supplies. And if they want to survive, then they better come with them. But this woman didn't want to leave uh, Dr. Winthrop because he he was severely hurt. He was barely even conscious. And so her and the other woman, uh, Cadet Ava Davies. No, she's not a cadet. She's a council person to uh, Ava Davies. She she's a scientist as well. Um, they were like they were staying put because they weren't going to leave him. So we find out that there's a dust storm brewing, and there's a gang that's led by prisoner. I want to say is it two two three, or two two five? I can't remember. Um, they have a pack, or like a gang, right? And so they're going to take out whoever is at that crash site. And he knows that. He hears them howling. So he makes a decision because normally he looks out for himself, but he decides he's going to go and he's going to help them. And he is attracted to Bella because when he looked out, of course, he was attracted to her. So... It apparently has also been eight years since he's been with the woman. So he's been on this planet for eight years. Um, so the problem is that, again, with this civilization, you've got to look out for yourself. And looking out for other people is what can get you killed. But he still decides to go and help. He's coming towards Bella. She looks terrified because she's thinking he's coming to take her out. But he's coming to help her and she yells out to him, I'll do whatever you want, just don't kill us. And he says, anything? And she says, anything. Prisoner 673 uh, takes Winthrop, put him, puts him over his shoulder and tells him to follow him. And so he takes him to a cave. And when they get in the cave, um, the councilwoman she's tripping she's scared she is freaking out she has a leg injury and when he walked up to her um well before he left he had pulled like a piece of the plane but he you he gave that to her to help her walk but she's still freaking out because again they're on a prisoner planet you know <laughs> like you still don't know you know, this appears like he's helping me, but, you know, you don't fully know what's all going on. This is a lot. A crash, you know, prisoners howling. That's a lot. So she is truly still terrified. Even though they're in that cave, they can still hear the gang of prisoners, like, ripping through the wreckage. Um, they can hear it all. So, I mean, that, I mean, that, that is terrifying in itself. And so, prisoner six seven three, I guess Davies, uh, she had, like touched him, and um, he gave her a look, but it wasn't because he wanted her. It was because the dude hadn't had human interaction in like a really long time. But Bella is the person that he wanted, and so Bella is who, of course, he took to another part of this cave. Um, so he takes her deeper into this cave and when she gets there, she can smell like flowers, vegetation, water. And it's something that she has never, like, she's never smelled. I don't think plants like plants died out, um, a long time ago. So flowers, all these things are new to her. They don't, I don't even think they have water. They have lasers or some crap on earth now. So this is all like brand new to her. And it it's overwhelming, you know. So clearly she does see, okay, well, this isn't a failed mission. Like there are resources here. You know, there's, ve there's vegetation. She's never, let me say it correctly. It's not that she doesn't know what a flower is and what a plant are. She knows what it is because she's a scientist. She's just never seen it, you know. So... She's thinking like, okay, if we get out of here, like there's hope, you know, for back on earth. 
So she decides, you know, whatever he asks her for, she's going to do it because this means hope for her brother and sister back on earth. So their deal is going to be, he gets to take her body for pleasure and in return, he protects her and her crew. She agrees to it. So he's only wearing a loincloth, by the way. So imagine this extremely muscled man <laughs> with what looks like a pretty thick equipment. Um, so this doesn't seem like too bad of a deal for her, right? Um, that's her her statement in, um, as I was reading it. So he tells her to take off her clothes. He tells her to take off her panties and bra and he tells her to go and rinse off so he takes her he has like a little um place where you know she can wash and things like that which looked weird to her because on earth they use lasers they don't even use soap so she was looking at the soap like what is this you know <laughs> so he gets in like the shower pretty much is what it is and he has to show her how to use the soap and things like that. And so then he takes his finger and runs it down her spine. And it does something to girl. So they uh, he finished, he washes her body, washes her hair, everything. And then they go to Bone Town. <laughs> and she, of course, has explosive orgasms. One, you know, she's never had that. Afterwards, she was trying to ask him, you know, his real name. He would not tell her. He told her he was inmate 673. <laughs> like, that's it. She was not getting a real name. And then afterwards, he had asked her, because um, she had said, you know, about trying to kind of reaffirm, like, you are going to keep us all safe. And he asked her, is there something going on between you and that injured man? And she said, no, nothing. She's like, he's just my superior. He said, good, because I don't like to share. So Bella wakes up after a night of being, you know, they screwed a lot that night. And she can already feel he's no longer with her. So she gets up. He had put some clean clothes for her to put on, which was weird because these are all old style clothes, things that they no longer have on earth. So at this point, like when she puts on her clothes, she just touches it and it just buttons up, right? So she's not used to physically buttoning up shirts or rolling up pants. Like sh this is not normal for her. So she gets up to leave. She hears this snarl and we find out it's an animal. Well, on earth, apparently there's no animals anymore either. And this thing is more along the lines of like a monster. It's like eight feet tall. Um, she of course had no clue what it was, but it was, again, it looked, it, the way they described it, it's more so like a monster, like some dinosaur age type thing. <laughs> and so prisoner six, seven, three, she either calls him that or she calls him convict. Cause he says, you either call me prisoner six, seven, three, or you call me convict. It's weird. She doesn't like saying it, but she doesn't know his name. So what else is she going to call him? So convict tells her, get behind me. Her ass is thinking she can outrun it. Now, I don't know why you think you can outrun something that you don't even know what it is. I, I was like, really? Um, but that's where her brain went. And he told her, no, like, stay behind me. And... She was thinking, oh, I got to go protect the doctor and Davies, you know. And this pissed him off because the agreement was, you give me your body, I protect you, right? I protect you and your people. You got to listen to what I'm telling you. You do not know this terrain. You don't know this place. So why are we acting like we know what we're doing and trying to play hero to people when you don't even know what the hell is, you know, standing in front of you? So he, of course, is super pissed. <laughs> so the name of that animal, it's called a Tigos, a Tigo, T-I-G-O-S is the name of that animal. So he eventually was able to like kill it, but it smelled blood because 
her dumb ass <laughs> had got I think the thing either the thing like swiped him or her something and she because she was trying to help him right and it it, it made the situation so much worse. So he was mad and he's like, listen, if you're not going to listen to me, there's nothing I can do. Like I'm out. And she got mad and she was like, you don't understand. Like I was just trying to help. And he's like, but you're causing problems, you know? So when they get back over to where Davies and um, Winthrop are, she sees that he's replaced the bandages for, for them. They're cleaned up. Like, He's holding up his end of the bargain. You know what I'm saying? And he, you know, was like, fuck it. He was, he was just ready to leave. So he went to, he left, he walked out. And he says to her, you know, eight years not dying. He's like, I'm not dying today because of you. So she got mad at him because he walked off. And she's like, you know, you're breaking your promise and all this type of crap and saying stuff to him like, you know, you're nothing but a low life. And I should have expected this from you. Just really mean shit. And that man came hurling around that corner and he told her, you know, don't yell at me. Because you can't back it up. You're talking a lot of shit. You cannot back it up. He's like, she felt stupid. Cause it's like this man just defeated an, a monster basically. And your first thought process is to talk fucking slick out of your mouth, not to apologize and say, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get in the way, but to try to defend your fuckery. You know what I'm saying? So she tells him, she begs him like not to leave. And she tells the story about her life. Like, listen, all I've had to do is take care of myself and my siblings since I was 14 years old when my parents died. You know, that's all I know how to do. I've worked so many jobs. I've done whatever I've had to do to survive. And so after they keep talking, he says he'll he'll help her. But again, she's got to do what he tells her. But if she pulls this stunt again, he's like, you're on your own. And so then he takes her to the other part of the cave because, you know, um, I guess they got all kind of hot and heavy in this heated exchange and they had like a hard fuck session and she does say to him why they're fucking like she likes what he does to her body they go up on a hike they're also tired he's carrying um convict i don't even really like calling him that but he's carrying um winthrop himself um ava's tired the girl is like drenched in sweat she looks pale Finally, they come to a stop, and he's going to go off. She doesn't really want to leave, you know, Davies and Winthrop, you know. And it was funny because, <laughs> because she winds up having the conversation with Ava that, you know, she tells her, like, Ava pulls her to the side, and she's like, you don't have to do this, you know. And Ava's apologizing to her, saying, you know, I should have been strong enough to go through with it. And um, she's like, I hear you all, you know, I'm, you know, I'm sorry you have to go through that. And Bella let her know, like, girl, I'm not being tortured. <laughs> she's like, you're hearing not sounds of pain, but you're hearing sounds of pleasure. And Ava kind of looked at her like, what? You know? So Ava gave her a little bit more information about her life in the council and how basically, even in the council, it ain't all it's cracked up to be. So apparently her fiance, um, she thought was this really great guy, but come to find out, he likes to fight, beat up women and force himself on her. So again Bella's realizing you know she's been looking at life this whole time like oh my god you know life in council is pretty much perfection and she's seeing that that is not the whole truth now convict has walked off so he's not present for this conversation and so Winthrop starts to come too and he of course is you know trying to kind of see 
what's going on, you know, and they're trying to keep him um, kind of settled because he's like wiggling around a lot, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And Winthrop decides to, um, he tried to get up. They had to stop him. And she tells him the whole truth, everything that happened. You know, how the science crew's gone. The military men that were supposed to be there to help him, they've abandoned them. Um, and Winthrop is furious because Pogue's job and the military's job was to protect them. So then he decides that he is going to pour out his heart to Bella and he tells her how much he cares for her and always has and how he has been such a fool allowing, you know, titles to keep them apart. Now in her brain, she's thinking, you know, how presumptuous of you to assume that I would want to be with you, you know, but he's holding her hand and he's, you know, saying all this stuff. She tries to pull away. He won't let her. And guess who walks up? good old convict and he says well doesn't this look cozy so then Winthrop's like who is this and she tells him you know this is the man who you know this is who saved us um says you know we wouldn't have been able to like carry you or anything like convict's been doing all this stuff so convict decides he's gonna be an ass <laughs> and he says that um, he wants her to come with him. And he even says something about her being on all fours. So now Winthrop's looking at like, what is he talking about? You know? And she kind of has to say like, you know, we have a deal. And, you know, we wouldn't have survived an hour without him, you know? And she told Winthrop, she's like, the truth of the matter is you promised us that this was going to be a safe mission and you failed. You didn't protect us. And she said, so now I got to do what I got to do for survival. So then she turns around. Ava's crying. She didn't care. She walked like confident, you know, with confidence. She walked away with him. And he, of course, convinced walking all fast. He didn't slow down because he knew she was coming. And so she goes after him. Now, we both know he did that, saying the whole thing about, you know, if I tell her to get on all fours, she will. Yes, it was to embarrass her, and it was to embarrass her because he feels like she's lied to him. Doesn't make it right, okay? And I am not saying it does. It doesn't make it right. But his ego was bruised, and he was pissed off that she, he felt like she had lied because she said nothing was going on. But then he walks up. This man's holding your hand, confessing this shit. You know, it's like, wait a minute. So now it's like I got to put you in your place and let you know you're nothing to me but a body. Fucked up, pitiful, but that's what his little ass did. But I, I do like how, you know, Bella... Her first reaction wasn't to be like, oh, my gosh, a man in council wants me like the privilege. Like she didn't view it like that. Like she sees Winthrop. OK, he's a head scientist. Great. He's in council. Great. But she doesn't want him. And it doesn't change just because he has a position. And I like that just because he said this stuff to her. I think it very much was presumptuous to him to just assume that she would want him, you know, because even if convict wasn't in the picture she wouldn't choose Winthrop at all that was my little mini rant so <laughs> when she finally reaches the end of wherever they were um he he walked to she sees something more beautiful than what she saw in the cave so many plants vegetation water stunning so then he comes up behind her and he says do you like it and she says, yes. She's like, this is beautiful. It means there's hope. So he says to her, what do you mean hope? She says, well, it means that things can thrive in a place like this. That earth is not going to be doomed. She's like, you know, when the scientists come, they'll do more research, you know, and all this type of stuff. And he's like, that's not going to happen. And she's like, yes, it is. What do you mean? He says, because no one's going to be able to come here. 
she's like you're lying he says no it is it's prisoner 223 i couldn't remember if it was prisoner 223 or 225 i don't know where that's coming from so he says prisoner 223 and his pack are the ones that shot your ship down and they've been doing that so they have a jammer that they use that shuts down the equipment on the shuttle and she of course kept saying you know you're lying you know and he says what do you think is going to happen when you leave people alone for thousands of years they don't just remain prisoners you have left them to themselves they're not in cages right they roam free on a planet it may be desolate right but clearly it's not really that desolate because there is vegetation thriving right so he says when you leave people alone for thousands of years you turn them into not just prisoners now they're begun they're it's it's a terrorist camp he's like that's what they've been doing they've been training to take over because they run this place you know um he says you know someone's decided to lead and the others want to follow he says and before you know it they're, they're going to have everything that they need to get a spaceship to get out of here and you know exact revenge on the council or go to other planets or whatever they decide to do which lets me know that the council probably does a lot of dirty stuff i'm not saying that every person on this planet is innocent but I also think that as, you know, with a society where you put people in prison for things that they haven't even done, you can only imagine in a situation like this where there is such a distinct, there's like two classes, right? There's counsel and there's everyone else. So you know there's going to be some discrepancies, you know? So um, he's thinking about, uh, he's having a little flashback in his brain. He's thinking about when he was married, when he was on earth, he was in the military. He was a pilot. Um, he had a wife and he used to be gone a lot. And so she got a life and he didn't, he wasn't mad at her for it, you know, but she started apparently fucking with a married council member. And, um, it makes more sense as to why it pissed him off as well to see Winthrop like rubbing on her hand and like confessing this stuff to her makes a little bit more sense. Doesn't make it right, but it does make a little, gives a little bit more context to his strong reaction to it. She up saying, no, no fell off. He had to grab her from off the cliff, had to grab her. Then she starts crying and he just says, it's going to be okay for his nickname for her now. So then she wanted to know if they were even saved from the two, two from two two three in his pack. He said, "I mean, for now we are." He's like, "I've done my best to keep your tracks clear. Um, they don't know you all exist, but that group that left you all, I'm sure they're not covering up their tracks, so they're buying to find them. Hopefully, they won't tell them that there's other survivors because if they find out that there's two women, they will take what they want from you and then wind up taking you out." You know, it's, it's, it's pretty harsh there. So, of course, this throws her. She's thinking about her family, you know, her siblings. And the fact that, you know, back on Earth, they don't have any protection now. You know, with her gone, they're going to lose that. And that's really concerning her. So, she's more so scared for them than herself. So, um, he said something to her about Winthrop... Um, that he was a council member and all this type of stuff. And um, she did tell him again, like, I don't want him, you know. And I didn't want him before, you know, any of this happened, you know. <laughs> and that did release the tension he had been holding in himself because he did think that there was something there between them. So then she asked him, could you try not to embarrass me? She says, um, don't humiliate me in front of them. He did apologize for doing that to her. When he was in front of the other two, he had said something too about pain. And he told her, I would never inflict pain on you. He was like, I was just saying that stuff. 
<laughs> he was like, but I wasn't serious. He said, but I was serious about you getting on all fours. He was like, so get to it. So she drops to her knees. Um, he starts eating her pussy. Fingers her, makes her come super hard. And then, of course, he puts his dick in her, fucks her hard, but he puts a finger in her ass. That she had never experienced, and that was an incredible delight for her. So they both came pretty hard. So then they heard this whistle sound, and he tells her, you know, you stay behind me no matter what. She, of course, is like, you know, she'll be fine. And he tells her, she's like, wait a minute. She's like, you go first. And if I hear something, I'm coming for you. So he tells her, no, you stay your ass here. And like, I'll come and get you, you know, just stay behind. Like, just stay behind me. Like for once, just do what I tell you. Do not leave from behind me. So they go down and guess who's there? It's Pogue and his military guys. They've come back. It was 10 of them before. Now it's only seven. So Pogue and his men, they have their weapons drawn on Convict. They're telling her to come out from behind him. Um, you don't have to listen to him anymore. Winthrop saying, you know, you don't have to whore yourself out and all this type of stuff. I'm like, shit, just put my whole fucking business out there. I would have been so mad if I was her. And I feel like he did that too because he was pissed that she was messing with Convict, you know. So he was being petty too, I feel. And she's trying to convince them, listen, he's a hero. Like, we're all here because of him. And Ava tried to step up and say something, too. She's like, the real hero is Bella. And if she's saying he's a good dude, we need to listen to her. Her word holds value. You know, she's the one that's been keeping us all alive. So then we find out the real reason that Polk has come back. Winthrop, because he's in council... He has a tracking device in his skin. So normally the tracking device is on the shuttle. But what they started doing was putting it on the actual members. So as long as the council member is alive, they know, okay, the shuttle's dead gone, but there's a council member still alive. Send a rescue team, right? So the only reason Pogue brought his ass back was because he has the thing that can track Winthrop. So he knew he was still alive. Because the minute Winthrop dies, the tracker stops. So he knew Rex, if rescue's coming, I need to be by the person they're coming for. So that's why he came back. <laughs> so as they're trying to talk, there's this huge like flying dinosaur type thing that comes down. I forget what he said it's called. I can't remember and I didn't write it down. Um, she's freaking out. He has to tell her to listen because she's like, you got to save him. He's like, no, listen, it's going to retract in like 20 seconds because they were like shooting at it, you know, and it couldn't defend itself that much. So it's going to have to retract in a little bit. So he's like, just give it 20 seconds and it'll regroup and it'll fly off and your friends will be fine. He's like, I'm trying to tell you what to do so that you can survive. So finally she listens to him and then um, they wind up running back to where he says home. So I guess the, where he initially had him wasn't their home, but this new place that he heard to is where he actually lives. And it kind of freaks her out because home sounds permanent, you know, <laughs> but she goes. She follows him. They reach what he calls the oasis. And she, of course, tries to have him along the way. She's wondering, you know, if she should have stayed with Pogue and Winthrop because what if, you know, once he's done with her, he throws her away and she's on her own anyway. Like it might be best to just go ahead and cut her ties now because she is growing to care for him a little too much. So they get there. It's beautiful. It's not a lot of people there because this is Tigo's land. Um, I'm going to say Tigo. Tigo's. It's their land. So a lot of people don't like to come over there. Um, 
And then the other place where there's a lot of more people is where they do the drone drops, which is where they bring food and fresh meat, which are new prisoners. So really that's a more harsh place in section. And that's really hard to survive. So she's taken all in and he thinks he hears something. He tells her to go behind a boulder and wait there. He says, don't you leave until I tell you. He told, tells her to, you know, stay quiet, watch, and, you know, try and see if you can see anything. So she tries to protest at first, but eventually she takes her ass behind the boulder. So she's finally able to calm herself down. She doesn't hear anything. And then all of a sudden, boom, someone comes up from behind her and it's someone from the 223 pack. He smells like rotten fish. Awful. And he, of course, is about to R.A.P.E. her. And she tries to struggle. There's no point. He's stronger than her. And she still kept fighting, though. But in the end, because he made a comment to her, you can fight. I like when they struggle. He says, but you're just going to end up dead anyway. And then, of course, Convict comes, saves the day. They have a fight. And Convict kills the man like right in front of her and all she can think is oh my god convict just killed for me so afterwards of course he asked her if she was okay she told her you know that um she you know she was she was shaking clearly um and convict told her that guy had like r-a-p-e-d 11 women he was a horrible human being. He should have been dead a long time ago. And for once, she wasn't on a high horse. And she was like, yeah, he should have been killed. <laughs> um, she's like, yeah, he needed to go. So it breaks down some walls for her. And she tells him how grateful she is for him. And um, how, you know, she knows she wouldn't have survived these rotations without him. And she's talking and she's getting worked up girls wants that meat and so he tells her we need to wait um he also tells her his real name his real name is Kane, and he's telling her they need to wait because he still like has that adrenaline going from you know just taking out the guy but she's like "Uh, uh-uh, i don't want soft i want i want hardcore so i want hard and rough and so even though he said he couldn't when he started touching her he was still soft and tender with her but when they fucked it was hard and rough um he's afraid of the attachment that's growing and clearly she has it too so he told her tomorrow i'm going to teach you combat i'm going to teach you how to survive and she was really loopy because she was like coming off of an orgasm um but he knows he's got to he's got to teach her this stuff. Um, he also feels like he wants to be better for her. Um, he says in his head, you know, that he couldn't save his wife, but he wants to be able to save her and get her back to earth where she wants to be. Um, he definitely wants to try and help her get on that next rescue ship that comes in. So his intentions are to help her get back. Um, and then he knows he has to adjust to being alone again. And, of course, he knows his thoughts will continue to be jumbled with thoughts of her. They get back to the cave, um, and they don't get there until night. Um, It's a pretty modest cave. There is water there and stuff like that, so she can take a bath um, or a spring, whatever it's called there. They wind up fucking a few more times that night, and then in the morning, um, it's training time. So he's coming at her hardcore making her train she's tired you know her mind's thinking about all kind of stuff you know (laughs) a dust storm's happening so they couldn't leave out anyway um she's concerned about this because you know they can't warn the crew about 223 in his pack you know and the good thing he told her is that 223 is not out there either like everyone's got to take cover until these dust storms you know subside so he's kicking her ass of course he winds up calling out the name Gwen when he's talking to her and he's like you know Gwen you got to do better than that and she looks at him and she says who's Gwen Gwen I'm sorry did I say Glenn Gwen and he doesn't say anything he just says let's go he's like you know we need to regroup and he says come on fighter girl and 
she gets pissed because now she wants to hear her name because she had never really thought about the idea that you know there could be someone back on earth that you know he longs for misses or anything like that brain never even went there and they're fucking so she's like she wants to hear her name off of his lips so she says to him my name's bella you call me bella so he says bella with an attitude he's like yeah maybe we have been at this too long you know maybe we need a break so now she's scared because she doesn't know if he means a break from training or like a break from the deal and she's afraid to even ask um because she don't, doesn't know what he's gonna say after they finished she was trying to talk to him but he wasn't saying much back to her and that pissed her off and he just said to her i have spent eight years not talking to anyone like the man has been in solitude he's trying to get her to understand that you know because she's making this about herself like if he's not talking to me then he was going to talk to me and there's something wrong you know <laughs> So then she felt bad, which she should have. And she saw this pile of stuff, plane parts and things like that. And she's trying to figure out like what he's doing. She's like, what are you trying to do? Build a space engine, so, space engine so you can fly outside of here? He's like, no, I'm trying to build a jammer similar to the one 223 in his package um, has, you know, built to bring down the shuttles. She automatically assumed the worst she's like you're trying to hurt people she never even thought about why that it could be something positive of why he was doing this and so she goes off on him and he tells her my plan was to take down one of the droids that brings the food that brings it twice a year and to try and jam 223's jammer so that way your rescue shuttle could actually get here. And then she he walked off. She felt bad. Um, she did notice that he didn't say him as well. He just said for her. Because before this, she was making this whole thing about, you know, how he was a good guy and how people can change and all this type of stuff. But then it's like you forgot that and you still see him in a negative light because your first assumption was that he was trying to do something bad so she apologized for making that assumption and um they have this conversation and she tells him you know listen if you don't want me here um just tell me i'll go ahead and i'll be on my way and of course he's like what are you talking about she's like you know i know i can be a lot i know i can be a handful i don't always listen i know it's a problem and he tells her, I want you here, you know? And he knew part of the fact she was saying this shit is because he had yelled out Gwen's name. She wanted more information. She wanted to know what that person meant to him. He knew where it was coming from, but he was not ready to dive into that conversation, conversation just yet. So he just told her to board up, um, keep everything shut until he got back. Um, that way, you know, 220, the pack can't get to her or the T goes like none of them can get to her, you know? And, um, she's all like, you know, I'll be here when you get back. And he's like, you better well, you damn well better be. I almost forgot. He also had a little flashback. We find out that him and Gwen got married really young. They didn't really love each other. They just got along well at first and they had known each other for like maybe six months when they got married. She didn't like him deploying all the time. And eventually she had found solace in the arms of a married councilman, which apparently pissed him off. Not that she cheated, but the guy that she was messing with apparently was like really corrupt. Um, he was one of the ones that made sure the council had plenty to eat and everyone else had to ration off their stuff so he's an awful person and so um the Gwen woman wanted the lifestyle with the council because it was a much easier lifestyle so of course she wanted that and so he says in the end everyone lost but we don't have the full story just yet of what happened 
So Kane leaves and is gone for a little while. He told her to keep everything closed. Her dumbass opened one of the windows because she's claustrophobic. The only reason I call her dumbass because I get you claustrophobic, but you have seen creatures, okay? You better take some deep fucking breaths. I'm just saying. I would not open no fucking window at all. I would be too terrified of that. Like, I don't. <laughs> and maybe because I don't understand the, the, the dramatics of having claustrophobia. But I'm just saying. You have seen creatures. Like, <laughs> eight foot tall creatures. I'm not opening no fucking window. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, thankfully, Kane comes. He sees that the window's open. And she says, well, I was just worried about you and all this type of crap. He's like, yeah, but um, she, oh, and she told him that she had claustrophobia. But he's, he told, he was just like, why you didn't tell me? You know, she's like, it's okay. I got through it. I'm fine. So, he tells her what happened when he went to try and talk to her crew. So, they would not listen to him. Um, she kept thinking she needed to come with him. And, um, he's like, that wouldn't have worked, you know? So she's still holding fast to the fact that the rescue ship is coming and that it's better to be close to Winthrop. And so, of course, um, he tells her there's a battle going on between Pogue and Winthrop about who's exactly in charge. They've lost two more men to the dust storm and another one the food poisoning so it's been a lot going on um he's been able to erase their tracks and stuff like that but they keep going further than where they're supposed to and they're they're gonna they're exposing themselves and they're just too stupid because they think they know everything so she's like i'm just gonna have to go you know basically go back to them i know they'll listen to me why she thinks this when they haven't listened to her all this time, I don't know. But she feels like she needs to go ahead and take herself back. Um, I wonder if they're going to take her hostage. I don't know. That's just how I think of that pole guy, especially. Um, I feel like they're not going to let her leave. Um, so he knew he couldn't stop her. Kane knew he couldn't. So he's like, listen, I'll get a message to Ava for you. Write it down so she'll know it's from you. I'll keep working on this jammer, try to get it to work, help me with it, and then in a few rotations, I'll, you can go back. He's like, I'm trying to help you get back home. And she's like, okay, but um, what did she say? She said something like, because she wants him to come back too, right? But for him, he's like, that's not an option. She goes to take a shower, and of course, she's got a bunch of thoughts going through her head. She knows she's falling for him. Um, she's not ready to leave him. Um, she wants to find a way to get him off this damn planet, too. Um, she's decided not to tell him that just yet um, because, you know, she feels like if he, he, she says it, he's going to fight her on it. So he comes in and joins her. They have a little sweet moment. He tells her, listen, I want you here. Um, not because of the deal, but because I know it's the safest place for you to be. And I also, I just want you here with me, you know? And she tells him she does want to be with him as well. And he does admire the fact that she is committed to, keeping, to helping her colleagues um, as well as her siblings most importantly her siblings like they mean everything to her they have a nice moment he brought us some flowers from the oasis which is a beautiful place with running uh, springs vegetation everything and she thought that was so sweet that was the only gift she'd ever received in her life and so she was beyond happy and of course you know they had their fun so the next few days are kind of consumed of fucking working on the jammer and going to the oasis so she could collect different samples and on this particular day, they had just had a nice heart fuck and she was trying to rest. And he's like, we got to get ready to go because um, it's there's two suns on this planet. And sometimes it makes the days shorter. So they need to get back because the predators come out at night. 
So finally, they're about to leave after her ass had kept procrastinating. And they're on the path back to the cave. And a python, which is some type of snake-like thing, but it's way bigger. Because <laughs> everything here is like monster size. Um, is down the path, cutting them off. And then they find out to the back of them, there's a damn T-ghost. T-ghost. I can't fully describe that scene that unfolded because it was a lot to read. Again, this is a really interesting read. Um, what happened was, as normal, her ass didn't listen. Damn near got killed. Um, eventually, he was able to take out both of the animals. Um, she kind of helped a little bit because she let the python away. But she did hurt herself in the process. It was just so much going on to read in that scene. So then we get back. They get back inside. He unleashes on her because he's pissed. He's like, I, you keep telling me you're going to listen and then you don't. <laughs> he's like, you want to know who Gwen is? Gwen was my wife back on earth. And she didn't listen to me and she got killed. And she's in the dirt right now because of it. And I refuse to let that happen to you. He tells her, if I have to make you hate me, then so be it. So then he took something that was like a whip, like he was going to beat her. And he like threw her on the bed. And she starts spewing facts on him like i know what you're doing you're trying to make me hate you because you don't believe you deserve anything good you know and all this stuff and she's like you're the one that's making this sentence horrible you're pushing me away and she's like i'd rather leave and die than stay here and deal with this you know and she's like thank you for everything but she was out and he's like you're not gonna survive without me and she's like well i'd rather take my chances and she left. She's like, I wish you the best. And she got out of there. She goes back to her colleagues. Polk is an absolute nightmare. Oh, my gosh. He All he does is say, like, sexual innuendos to her. Winthrop, he is getting better. But he's nowhere near 100%. Ava's been going to the Oasis collecting dirt samples. And then one day, um, one of the sh soldiers comes back and tells... Um, Pole that Ava and the guard are gone. It looks like they just fell over. Um, all they found was their weapon. So Pole doesn't want to go and even look for them. You know, Winthrop is willing to go and look, even though he's in no physical condition to go. So she decides that she's going to go and ask Kane for help and runs right into him when she leaves. Well, we find out that Kane has been watching over her ever since she left. <laughs> He doesn't know what took out Ava and the guard because he was watching her. He also told her that apparently there's a rumor that humans aren't the only ones who have been dropping things off on Drag Dragnath 25. Aliens are there too, and that's what might have taken Ava. So he's going to help her find Ava. They search until nightfall, but no sign of him. They stayed in the cave. He apologized to her for his behavior um told her how he felt he told her he got the jammer complete but it isn't a hundred he isn't a hundred percent sure that it's gonna work he told her you know he will get her off this planet and girl says you're coming with me and he told her i can't go back so while they're in the cave there's these confessions of love she says it to him first but before she said it um he did tell her how much he needed her he didn't want to but that's just what it is you know and that he would die for her he literally would do anything for her and then they had this nice hard fuck session he finally kissed her on the lips because all this time he wouldn't kiss her on the lips he kissed her body never kissed her on the lips and so then they both came and then there's a barrel put to the back of Kane's head and it's Pogue and he says this isn't gonna work out the way you two lovebirds had hoped so Pogue is there with his men. They've all got their weapons drawn. Winthrop is there too. It's a whole showdown. So eventually they wind up tying up Kane. They put some handcuffs on him to restrain him. She fought like hell, but they still wind up restraining her. Then they saw in his bag the jammer. And they were like, oh, you're the one that's been doing that stuff, you know? Because she had been telling them... Um, bella about what 
two two three and this pack had been doing but now they're thinking oh no they didn't believe her about that so now they think yeah it's probably been happening but it's been your boy toy that's the one that's been doing it and so he's denounced the council pogue has he's like this is now a threat i'm in charge when it's a threat and winthrop is such a wimp he ain't gonna he's he doesn't do anything he just backs up so then they see a shuttle coming through and she's trying to yell at them like no you need to use it you know and um he's like those people are not gonna make it you know we can really get out of here pogue of course doesn't listen throws her over his shoulder takes her out she's screaming and before they um they shocked um what's his name they shot Kane. it was oh my gosh it was a lot to read that scene and he was like yelling out because pogue was taking bella away so as they see the shuttle coming it's starting to look disabled it's starting to look disabled like it's about to crash and pogue realizes that what she had said the whole time was the truth that pack 223 were the ones that had jammers and they were making those shuttles crash so then we find out winthrop had gone back and he had untied kane and kane had got the jammer working so now as it was coming the shuttle was coming fast but it was still intact so by the time it did it crashed but it didn't do the damage that it would have really done before so now they hear 223 in his pack howling because they're coming right they've seen that shuttle come in they're coming so eventually um you know they let well you know they let bella go so she was trying to go back to get Kane, but Winthrop wouldn't let her. He's like, he pro he told me to promise he told me to promise him that I would get you on that shuttle no matter what. He'll be okay. And Winthrop was like, we'll send someone back for him. But she's like, 223 is gonna kill him. They'll know it was him that helped us out, you know? So then 223 and his pack, they're closing in. They've got guns come to find out poke had lied he said that the guns at that that were taken were like like they had lost them or something but no two two three in his pack had took them so now they've got even more weapons so it's just a whole mess so the rescue soldiers are getting killed um this was a good scene to read though it was a lot of action this would make an amazing movie so they make it close to the shuttle a lot of people got killed winthrop protected bella he killed one of the prisoners that tried to get her then all of a sudden they hear a loud roar and here comes kane with a bunch of blood on him he's killing folks with his spear he comes rushing towards her she's hurt he scoops her up and um winthrop winds up jumping in front of kane so he winds up getting killed but he said at least i died a hero <laughs> so kane sweeps him up and at first one of the guards doesn't want to let him on um but then pogue even pogue he was still being an ass and was like he's a prisoner you know and all this type of stuff but everyone else was like no he just saved us all you know like no like he deserves to be on here so then they let him on and then the captain was like you know he wanted a full report all this stuff and he's like, you know, any good news to bring back to Earth? And she says, as soon as we get everything squared away with Kane, I'll let you know my findings. So they get them cleaned up, and her and Kane have a conversation. Kane is kind of um, asking her, is, this, is she sure this is something she wants? And she, of course, is like, I want you. That's period. I don't care where we are in the universe i want you that's not changing you know because he was trying to let her know listen this is how it's going to be people looking at you crazy because you're with me and she didn't that meant nothing to her to good old bella she could care less so they're going to head back to i think the space station first and then back to earth so in the epilogue we find out that bella was able to get Kane not only immunity, but I think whatever it is where she gets the crime completely wiped out. I can't think of the word right now. It'll probably come to me later. Um, 
he gave testimony about the council and all the stuff that had happened on drag off drag off um 25 and the war that had been declared on the planet um once he had given this information so they sent or sent military troops to um drag off drag ass i don't know if i'm saying it right um 223 in his pack jammed a lot of them but it wasn't enough to jam all of the shuttles so a lot of them got through a lot of prisoners got killed there is a complete war going on so they have a decent position but they're going back to the planet to find ava davies um they found out her family is so awful um they are horrible people um we don't know why her family they want her back but it's not for any good reasons um so bella's like we need to get there to her before they get to her um her two siblings one's 18 one's a little younger they're both going with her um on this mission and so kane's like okay because he didn't want to leave them behind because he's growing close to them as well so they're all headed out what we do find out um i forgot this part about when he was doing the memories of his wife gwen so what happened with gwen is so she's messing with the married councilman she wanted him to leave his wife so she like told in a public place what that they were having this affair to try and force his hand well it didn't force his hand he sent someone to take her out and it was his brother so um he wind up I, did he kill let me think i think kane might have killed the brother no i don't think he did well anyway kane hadn't done anything really he might have killed the brother or somebody whoever it was that killed um gwen is who he took out so they threw a bunch of bodies on him that's why he got a lifetime sentence and got sent there so all of that has been expunged that's the word i knew it would come to me if i kept talking so in book two we find out what happened to ava davies and it's called captive love story and so we're gonna dive into that one next week what did you all think of trapped i love this it combines space sex and futuristic it was awesome <laughs> I absolutely loved it so we're gonna do the whole series I didn't know after reading the I was like you know what let me try it see if I like the first book if it's okay then it'll just be a great starter for people and if they like it they can go and you know read the other books but I loved it and so I think we're gonna do this whole series I think it's like four books maybe I think if it's more than that I'm not doing more than that so we'll do a few books out of the series I'll just say it that way let me know what you guys think drop down in that comment section and let me know um if you are in the market for a beautiful notebook or journal I do have those available and that link is going to be available down in the description section below as well I thank you all for your support. Make sure you like and subscribe. And thank you for tuning in to the Always Reading Book Club.